right, welcome everybody. We're actually going to have a great time. We're going to do some figures. I actually, uh, I like to save calendars and things like that, magazines, any kind of um, type of uh, publications to work from in the future. So I'll save them and then sometimes I'll just leaf through them. And I found this really interesting picture. This is an Amish calendar I had and I just clipped out a small um, portion of the calendar. And it's just a really f interesting two figures, a, a man and a woman. Uh, and they're in the fields here. It looks like they're farming. They're doing some farming here. And uh, so I thought that would be a good uh, exercise, a good fun composition to do. So let's work on this. And we'll just go step by step as we go through the uh, drawing and painting uh, process here. And you just follow along. And I know many of you will be happy because we do have a uh, picture, you know, a clipping or a photograph of what we're doing here. So I'll leave this here until we get to the painting portion. And then maybe... Um, well, at that point, once it's you have it, everything is drawn, uh, you can work out your own colors and so forth. But I'm going to try to stick with the same colors here that we see. And um, we'll go for it and see what happens. So uh, the first thing is I just have a, a watercolor paper here. And it's maybe, I'm actually going to make this into an occasional card. But you could just take regular paper and put it down onto the table. Or, or you can have your sketchbook. You can work in a sketchbook or, of course, your paper if you have an easel. However you like to work. Uh, this is 5 by 7. And then I'll tape it so it'll be a little smaller than 5 by 7 when we're done putting the tape on. But I'll put the tape on the bottom first. Like that. So this way we have the bottom portion of this taped. And we'll, we'll just take notice that the bottom portion that I tape is a little bit larger. A little bit higher and wider than the other portions that we're going to tape off. And I have different size tapes. This one might be about a half inch tape. So you can pick up different size tapes. This is probably about a half an inch. It's pro drafting tape. You can, you can kind of see the pro drafting tape. So this is really great tape. Very, very uh, excellent for watercolor. It doesn't tear the paper at all. So when you lift it up off the paper, there's no tearing of your watercolor paper, which is really important. You don't want to have that happen. Most times if you're using expensive watercolor paper, you won't find that it will tear. But if you're using student grade paper, sometimes that will tear a little bit easier. So you have to kind of just uh, go by feel and figure things out as you go. But we were, we're going to tape off again our around our rectangle here. So we have a, a portrait style, which means it's upright, vertical. The... Uh, the composition. That's all. And then we're just going to tape around all three sides. And this fourth side is a little bit larger. So we have a little area we could put a message in the bottom for, for a card if you're doing an occasional card. You can actually make occasional cards and just stockpile them. And this way, when, you, when you're sending out cards or it's the holidays or whatever, you can make themes. You can make holiday themes. Maybe make five or six or ten or twelve, a dozen cards of maybe a holiday theme. And then this way, when the holidays come, you have your cards all set. You don't even have to worry about going out to the stores and all the rush and madness of the holidays. No worries. You just you have your cards already made. And then you can just put in your messages inside and, you know, make a little note in there or a little poem you might want to have inside your card and... You might have a little gift in there too for somebody. And um, so that's uh, pretty much the taping process as we tape around the outer borders of our rectangle for our card. Or it can just be a regular painting. And in that case, you wouldn't have to really do the wide border at the bottom. You could just do tape around all four sides of your rectangle so that you have a nice, crisp, clean border around your painting. And then we're going to we'll start our drawing. We'll take a break soon, too. Already we've been working probably 10 or 15 minutes, or maybe about 10 minutes. I'm not sure, but let's start our drawing. Now we can kind of see two couples, you know, a couple here, uh, a male and a female. And it's kind of a casual. They're working in the uh, on the farm here. So um, looks pretty straightforward. Um, I'll start with the male figure over here. So I want to... I want to try to maybe have a little more space between the top 
of the, um, or maybe I, maybe I want to leave it like that. That actually looks good, the, the hat right at the top. So let's do that. I'm going to make, so I'm going to try to, I want to make sure I start correctly. So if we look at the, if we look at this, it's about halfway. So halfway here on this, the figures are kind of one on either side of the halfway point approximately. You can kind of see that. So we can kind of make our halfway point here. I'll use a lighter pencil line here just to give myself a little bit of a pencil line to kind of make sure I'm staying on the sides of the center line so we can kind of stick with the same theme. And I'm going to go with the hat here. I'm going to change my mind once again. I don't want the figures looking like they're floating. So they're going to look like they're floating if I keep them really high on this rectangle. So let me keep them lower. So let me make them, let me start their heads about, I'll give them plenty of uh, headroom above. So I'll go down about one inch and then start the figure there. And we'll start here with Thor. So I'm just going to do I'll do the hat first for the male fi figure. And we just do the hat in the head. a beard so I'm going to put the beard there and the beard on the side and he's got some hair there and he's wearing sunglasses like that that's pretty good so I did the hat first And then the, the head and the beard and the face. And I'm going to do a shirt. And then I'm going to try to start getting some, some kind of reference lines like his left shoulder over here is in, he's kind of turned, he's turned to his left, so we're kind of seeing much more of his right shoulder and right side of his body, and then his left side of his body is sort of foreshortened because it's turning away from us, so we want to keep that in mind that where is his outer side of his left shoulder here? So we'll take a look at the the draw, the draw uh, the photograph, and we'll say, where is that left shoulder? And we could even say, where is that, the, um, the very, very left side of his shirt. And if it if we bring that line up, it's right at the rim of his glasses over here. So that's about right. So we have that there. How about his beard? Is it below his beard? Yes, it is. It's actually a little lower than what I have it. So now I want to just lift up that line a little bit and make it a little lower. It's kind of important to try to kind of find out where things are so the <clears throat> the very very outside of his left shoulder is in line with his sunglasses and it's below his beard by about a little bit so that's about right right there and his sh he's gonna have his shirt sleeve here and it goes out on a little bit of an angle like that <clears throat> and I'm gonna leave his rolled up shirt sleeve right there and and I'm going to come back over here. I don't want to keep going too far away from the from where we started. I'd rather work around in the close proximity to the head here. So I want to keep everything close by and this right shoulder, where's the right shoulder here? Well we can see the right shoulder is about a head length out from 
the side of his ear and his neck. So if you can imagine the width of his head and hat, his right shoulder is out about that same width, the width of the head. So if we take our pencil and just say, oh, how convenient. The, the wooden part of the tip of this pencil is about the, a little bit less is the width of the head. So then we just go over here and do that and say, okay, from about the neck, neckline here over his shoulder is about where that wooden part is of the pencil. Not the lead, but the wooden part. And then we say, okay, that's another point there. So that's good. That's the point of his shoulder. And then we have that. And this is really good. Now we're really starting to, um, he's got his sleeves rolled up. He's working on the farm here. So he's got his uh, working gear on. And, and then we just sort of, we don't have to get too much details in with the clothing with um, folds and things like that. We can paint that in. We can paint in some light and shadow. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's a little bit, um, problematic if we start getting too many details with the clothing and folds and things like that. Like that's something where if you get the basic outline of your figure, you start with your head first, you get your head um, drawn in. I noticed that up, up here the hat's a little bit too big there, too wide. So the, the hat is kind of in the same alignment with the head. So makes sense. The, the hat goes over the top of the head, so it's going to be the same size and width of the head pretty much. So I had it too far out. And um, we have um, the head done, the left and right shoulder. And let's just do one more detail here. Let's do the his left left side of his chest here where, where his shirt is. And like that, we're going to have... And his pants are right about at the cuff where he has his el where his elbows are. That's about where his pants are, um, his waistline is. So that we're going to have that like that. And then he has on some suspenders. So we'll do the suspenders like that. And then as you can see, these suspenders over here, you can't see them because they're sort of turned away from us. Again, he's turned to his left, his, his body. And his shirt is over here his buttons on his shirt are there and I think that's good so let's stop here and take a break figure work is kind of demanding so take your time just remember you're always trying to get your you want to you want to just stay close when you work with your figure you want to start with the head first and work out from there use your head as your scale so if you say how wide is his shoulder well then you say okay well his head is this wide how about over here, if I look at the photograph, how wide is his shoulder over here? And you say, well, that's one head length there. And if you kind of just, you could even use a ruler if you want. You could take a, a small ruler and measure it if you want. Or you can just do it by like what I did here. You know, you say, you know, for this part of the exercise we're doing here in this composition, you might just, you might use your thumb and hold it up to the picture and say, all right, it's about where the H is. So where the H starts where the H starts, that's the width of the head here. How much over is the shoulder? And you hold it up to your photograph and say, oh, okay, yes, it's there. So it's a width of the head. And then we can do the same thing here. We can say, how much is the width of the head here? Because we committed to this size here. We started out with our head here. <clears throat> and then we uh, put our finger here and say, okay, that's the width of the head. From the lead, tip of the lead, to where my finger is here. I put that there and I say, okay, it's one width, one head length over to the shoulder there. So if you can get this concept, and that's all you have to do is get this same concept I just did right there, scaling and measuring things as you go around your drawing, you have it. You can get anything done, any kind of picture. It doesn't have to be figure work. It can be buildings, um, trees, in the, you know, landscapes, seascapes, boats. Of course, people we're doing now, but any kind of painting works the same way. If you can just take your time and scale everything according to your photograph, or your subject matter, or even if you're sitting outside and you're maybe in your backyard and you're looking at some things around your backyard or in your house, you're looking at some things like a vase in your house with some flowers in it, you would just do the same thing. You would just hold your pencil out in front of you. So you would have your pencil out in front of you with your elbow straight out and you would hold up your pencil and you would do it from there and say, okay, 
the vase is about this much from my thumb up to the tip of the pencil. Then when you come down to your paper, you start out with your vase drawn in so that it's going to fit on your paper and then from there you can just scale everything from there just like we're doing here. So we start out here. This head is obviously larger than this photograph because we're working on a larger scale now. This is a smaller photograph. Does that make sense? So that's why you have to upscale things. So, But, but if you do it this way, you're never going to go wrong. You just use your head, your first part that you're going to draw. The first thing you draw is the head for the figure. So then now we're talking strictly figure painting, but this same principle and method works for any subject matter. It doesn't, doesn't have to be figures. It could be anything. So again, we did our head. We got our head lengths in there. You can see we got our shoulders. We used some lines here. The sunglasses on the head was the alignment for his left shoulder over here, which is turned away from us. So his body is turned this way. So we're foreshortening. This is a foreshortening of his left shoulder there. So then we know that that's the point there. You're not going to see the full width of his left shoulder. His right shoulder here, of course, we're seeing all of his right shoulder. It's turned towards us, so it's as wide as his head. And we just scaled it and said, okay, there it is, the width of the head. From the left side of his head over is one width of the head. That's his shoulder point. And then from there, you can take that down. You get your sleeves here, and you're well on your way. And then you do the same thing. You you kind of say, well, wow, I can see in this photograph that the, his his uh, waistband of his, of his work pants are at the same level as his right arm here, his right cuff of his sleeve here. And then it goes down a little more over here. And then his suspenders are quite simple to draw. They're right there across that part of his uh, shoulder and chest and down to his waist. And then from there, we can scale. We'll, we'll, we'll take a break. And then once we come back, we'll, we'll figure on scaling the rest of the way down for his lower body, his uh, waist area down to his feet. And we're also have a little bit of a easier time here because his feet are in the um, it's a farm here. So there's all kinds of weeds and there's interesting stuff. This might be tobacco plants or I don't know what they are, but there's all kinds of things they're working with, with here on the farm. So, so his feet aren't really visible. So we have a little bit of an easier time here. We just have to get his legs down to the bottom here with a proper scale so that it looks, um, you know, good and pleasant and pleasing. We wouldn't want to draw this figure and take all our time here and then just go quick with the legs and then we wind up having legs that are, you know, way out of proportion, way too long or way too short. You want to get the proportions correct and that's really the key with figure work especially. You always want to try to maintain a close proximity of um, things with your scale so that you can get the proper dimensions of things, the scale of the body, the human form because it w you can always, you know, see in a painting or a picture if someone hasn't done the proper scale, you'll you'll kind of see things being off a little bit or whatever. So always remember, take your time with figure work. It's a little more demanding, but it'll work for you using the scale method of just scaling things and taking your time, getting your points around your figure drawing. And um, this will serve you well as you uh, continue to paint. So let's uh, come back. We'll take a break and we'll keep going. All right, we're picking back up again, and um, what I think I'm going to do is maybe I'm going to lift that up a second, and then I might put this over the top there. Let me see if I can actually uh, zoom in a little more, like this. Okay, that looks good. Let me see how my focus is. I just want to make sure my focus is good here. Just uh, momentarily, I want to just check to see that I'm in good focus here. That's good. Okay, so I want to get more of the pencil drawing in for you so you can see. And then this here is the bottom of the page. 
All right, so good. We can see the bottom of the page here. We're going to keep working on the figure. Let's zoom in a little more. And then again, I'm going to move this picture up just a little bit here, like that. And let's keep working. So we're working on the trousers now, the work pants of our um, Amish uh, male figure. And we're going to say, all right, one head length is approximately the black portion of my pencil. So now how many head lengths down to his waist? We already have that good because we scaled the sleeves and the waistline here. But how many head lengths is his waist to his feet? So let's figure that out. So I'm going to take my pencil and just hold it up here and just say, okay, the tip of the pencil to about there is one head length. And you can always make a mark too. I've done this many times. So you can, you could take a pencil and say, okay, there's the head length, and you could mark it on your pencil, like the, uh, mark it on your pencil with another pencil, and make a mark and say, okay, that's one head length there. Then you can come over to your picture and do that. Well, first you would say, okay, well that's one head length there from the tip of the pencil to that mark I made with the um, other pencil on the. Um, wood part of my pencil there. You can see that. Now, how many head lengths down to his feet from his waist? One, two, three, about three head lengths to his knee. So let's start out there and say, okay, on this scale, the black portion of my pencil is one head length, so we have to go three down to his knee. One, so that's one right there where the tip of my finger, finger is there. One, two, and three. So that's approximately his knee. So what that tells us is his pants are hiked up really high on his waist. Um, so his legs are going to seem a little bit longer than usual, but we don't ever worry about that because we've done the proper thing by scaling everything. So we scaled and figured out that three head lengths is his knees from his waist. One, two, three. Like that. Okay, now we're going to say where is his knee. We want to kind of find where his right leg is and his right knee is. So we're going to take from the suspenders down to his waist and then say, okay, now his leg is crossing over this way, his body, and his knee winds up being, if we hold our pencil here and we say, where's his knee on his right leg? It's in alignment with his right eye, so about here. So about where the center of his shirt is, where his buttons are on his shirt. So we just go down and say, all right, that's about the line. So that's where his knee is going to be, right about there. That's good. And then from there, we have the plants and things like that. So we're good. As long as we have that knee point, I think we're okay. And then we have his pants there, like that, and then like that. And then over here, we're just going to see that his left leg comes around and it intersects with his knee and then starts to turn behind this leg. So his, leg, his pants flare out there and then it crosses over right at the, where the knee is over here on the right knee, like that. And that is, looks good. Perfect. So there, we have a good um, rendering of the figure as far as the, the head, the um, upper torso, and the legs. And then we'll just finish. We'll get our arms here. So let's, maybe we can make his arms a little more interesting. Maybe we'll have him holding a bucket or something. And then we say, where is his, uh, where's his wrist on his right arm uh, from the waist down? So again, we use our pencil. We still have our mark there on our pencil. Unless we sharpen our pencil. If you sharpen your pencil, you have to probably redo your mark on your pencil. But I didn't sharpen anything, so one head length right is there. How many head lengths down to his wrist? One. Uh, about two head lengths to his knuckles on his hand. So what, he what head length is the black? So from the waist down, one two. So his knuckles are about there.
and then I just do this. I just kind of get the feel. His knuckles are straight across, and I just kind of make a um, almost like a um, oven mittens or a pair of mittens for winter time to get the basic shape of the hand. And then we're going to put a bucket here. He's got a bucket. So we're just going to have a little bucket here. He's holding a bucket. And then over here, we'll make his left elbow. His hand is coming down. His left arm is coming down over here. Um, So right here he's kind of, his arm is extending out a little bit here. He might be walking, it looks like he's walking, so he's in motion. And again I'm taking the idea of mittens. And that's pretty good. And then we're going to start our female figure now. So let's do that. Let's start with the head. Same thing. The female figure is a little shorter. So let's see where the top of her head is compared to... The top of her head is basically at the rim of where his hat is here. So if we come over here and we make the rim of the hat there, across, that's about where the female figure's head is. And... We'll draw the head here first, so we're going to just do the oval of the head. Her head is slightly tilted forward this way, like this, tilted this way. She has on a uh, headdress there, and then um, her neck kind of s softly turns this way, and then the shirt, her, her neckline is here. And then we see her ear is about here. So I'm just going to make a small notation of her ear here. Her jaw there and her neckline there. And the front of her blouse is here. And then she has. Her hand is here. So I'm sort of just carefully going slowly, working from the head down to the shoulders. Now I'm going to say, let's say the width of her head is about the same as the height of his head, where we made that pencil mark on the, uh, on the um, wood of the pencil. You can see that little mark I made. Over here, if we do the same thing, and we say, oh, 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 wow, wow, her head is the same width as the, almost as the, um, the uh, height of his head, as far as uh, you can see that. Width is about the same. So we have that there. The width is about the same. So we're going to come over here and say, all right, there's the width of the head. And I can just use my thumb and say, okay, there's the width of the head. Here's the width of the head where the pencil line, pencil line is there, pencil mark. Now we say to ourselves, how far is her shoulder and arm? How far over to the right over here is her, is her shoulder? So that's one head length there. So from the back of her head over is one head length to the back of her shoulder and arm, actually. So let's do one head length there my pencil, I hold my thumb, move it over here, back of the head, down here, and then I make a, put my, my finger there and say, okay, that's the point where her shoulder is there, and her arm over here. Like that. And I see I have to zoom out a little bit. I am sorry for that. I sort of zoomed in too much. There we go. Okay, so there we have that, and her sleeve is over here, so we're going to make that little bit of a folds in her sleeve and the shadowing there.
and then her arm. Her arm comes down like this, and her elbow comes up like that. So I'm going to try to get a better arm and elbow here. And I see that that elbow is not looking good. It should be more on an angle like this. Much better, like that. And again, your drawing, your drawings, your pencil drawings are, are always going to look a little awkward. Don't forget that. Always remember that. When you're drawing your pencil drawings before you paint, just remember, don't be hard on yourself. Get the best rendering you can because once you start painting you're going to also be able to paint in some details make some corrections with your painting as you're you know painting with your brush so you can alter things as you paint and it's easier to do those alterations when you're painting it's harder to do alterations when you're doing pencil drawings so the thing is if you get it halfway decent with your pencil drawing and pencil drawings always look a little awkward unless you're like you've been drawing figures for like 25 years then your pencil drawings are going to look great all the time. But trust me, if you're not an expert, you know, 25 years experience drawing figures, your pencil drawings are going to always look a little bit, sometimes a little bit off here and there. You might not like it. You're looking at it, you're going, oh, you want to avoid keep erasing and then pencil and then erasing. Try not to do that at all. Try to just do it like I'm doing here. Just get it halfway decent and go slowly and carefully and that's all you have to worry about don't keep erasing i please don't do it because i used to do that and then it wound up being that the paper was all destroyed my watercolor paper because i was erasing so much trying to get everything so perfect so uh, just a little tidbit of information there i think it's better if you just try to get it the best you can and then get in there and start having fun with your paints and then if it comes out good great you know you pin it up on the wall or you put it in a frame Give it to a gift for somebody. If it comes out lousy, no worries. You just toss it in the shoebox or your file folder you have by your art table. And, uh, you know, you start another one. Or if you have your sketchbook, you just flip the page over and start another one. So here, now with this female figure here, we're kind of at the more like, wow, this is kind of simple now. We have the head, her shoulders, her arm, and that's pretty much, we're really in great shape now because there's not much detail after that. The only thing we do have is... Um, and you can use a ruler for this. I have these, I, I take a ruler and I break it in half so that I have a small ruler. But for this here, she has like a rake or a um, shovel or something that she's got, that she has here in the fields. They're farming here. These uh, beautiful Amish people are farming. And so I can see, for me to try to draw this uh, shovel or a uh, rake or... Um, her farm equipment here that they have, their um, farming tools. I'm just going to use a straight edge for this, just to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to do that, like that. And then I see, you know what? For this one thing, I will erase a little bit. I notice it's on an angle a little more. I made it too much straight. So let me go on an angle more. That looks much better. That's better. And now we have um, where her hand is. It looks like there's a little bit of her blouse there. And then her, she's wearing her dress, her work dress. And then her work dress goes out like this. And the work, her work dress over here is from her, a little bit behind her elbow. And then it just comes down like this. And then we have uh, some plants and things like that. So I'm just going to make some indications of some plants and things like that over here. And that, and that should be fine. We're just going to have a little bit of detail down here with, with the ground areas. But the, the, the focal point is the figures. So. If anything, we're just having a great time doing figures, learning how to do the figure, the human form, scaling things properly, trying to get the best we can as far as um, alignment goes, where the alignments are of the main um, points of the figure, shoulders, head, shoulders, um, waistline, knees, feet, 
here we're kind of lucky where the feet of the figures, so our figures are, you know, in the um, fields here on a farm, so we don't have to worry about feet or anything like that because they're sort of hidden by all these little ground plants and things and the harvest that they're doing here. So we're, we're all set. So let's come back and we'll start painting. But I think we're, we have all the really the details we need right now. We have the figures completed and um, we'll start painting. And, and at this point, I'm going to um, probably take this off of camera because really we have the figure done. So that's the main thing, the drawing's done. And then we can do our colors and you can change your colors around. I'm going to use the same colors I see here pretty much. Okay, so I'm going to set that off camera a little bit there. And um, we'll zoom out. And then I'm going to leave that about there so we have our paints all ready to go. We can even zoom in a little more like that. Okay, so we'll take another quick break and we'll uh, start painting. And oh, oh, I mentioned too, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, make that um, decision just to Stick here with our channel. We're having great content all the time, every week. We're doing figures, landscapes, boats, seascapes, uh, still life paintings, of course, figure paintings, cities, you know, any type of, um, you can just, you know, we do all, all subject matter here, all watercolor. And um, so if you click on the subscribe button, all that does is really just alert you when you turn on YouTube on your computer. It'll say, ah, oh, Chris has made a new video. And that's all that is really. So it's just a, a way that, you know, it helps me as a YouTuber because I'm on YouTube. If you subscribe, it just helps me. It, it makes me more um, um, popular on YouTube and more people will get to see my videos, which I really enjoy, that more people are going to pick up watercolor. And uh, that's really the main thing. And there's no obligations, you know, there's no emails that, you know, there's nothing associated with me like, you know, sending you emails or anything like that. It's just when you subscribe, all it does is just let you know I've made a new video and that's really all it is and it's sort of like you're joining along on my channel saying yes I'm, I'm a follower of Chris Petrie I like his content I follow him on a regular basis that's really what subscribe means you're subscribed to my channel you like what I'm doing here and you want to kind of be always aware of what I'm doing because you know you want to follow along and that's all that really is so I'm hoping you'll do that and there's also that notification bell too on the right hand side by the subscribe button and that just gives you the automatic uh, notification on your uh, YouTube uh, application when you uh, click on YouTube right away you'll see a little notice saying oh Chris made a new video yesterday or today or so forth so I hope you will subscribe and um, thank you for all the people that have subscribed many of you have subscribed recently and I just thank you so much and also I'm so happy that you're joining along uh, on this channel and my goal is always to just help you to become a better watercolor artist and I'll try to give you all the concise important information that you need as a watercolor artist Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been uh, invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Again, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at TIA. R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Again, their website is T-I-A-R-T-S-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org. Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course, as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And uh, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online 
uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something that was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do, wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses, but right now I'm just not, um, not geared up for that right now. So they have them though for those that want to do online courses. But just a great resource and beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping, there's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. So that you can make a lot of progress quickly. Because many people get bogged down in the beginning uh, with watercolors because they just, they maybe are trying to tough it out on their own and learn it on their own um, terms. And they're not really getting really good uh, teaching and uh, getting good uh, ways of uh, learning and methods and techniques that are going to get them quickly up to speed on the medium because it is a challenging medium. It's a little tough watercolor. It's not easy. So I always you hear me say that all the time. It's not an easy medium and it isn't. But if you just stick here on my channel, I know you're going to get all the important information that you need because that's my goal. I'm always putting in the key information, you know, key information week after week, month after month and year after year always the key information. You're getting that with my videos. So it, eventually you are going to be creating really good looking paintings because you'll just automatically, by default, you'll be using my methods and my techniques which are going to get you to the next level. Okay, so we'll come back and start painting in just a second. And we are starting back up again and we took a break. Um, I'm kind of noticing that this might be a really helpful point in the video. If I take this photograph, and let's say you're up to speed now, you've got your com drawing completed, you did your pencil drawing, it, it's all 100% complete, as we are now in the video, the same, you're at the same point in, in time, synced up here. Uh, now, if I take this photograph and I... Um, you probably want to work along at the same time as me, but maybe some of you don't always do that. So what I can do is I'm going to zoom in on these figures like so. And then now if you hit the pause button, you can use this at, to paint from if you want. So you would hit the pause button and then you can just proceed and paint. If you feel like you want to paint, paint along with me, and um, work that way, well then we're going to go back to our standard uh, setup like this. So I notice it's a little tough. Maybe I'll work on the bottom of my palette. So if I leave this here, that'll work. Alright, so we'll do that. We'll leave the photograph up top and we'll start our um, painting. We're going to pour some fresh clean water into our water bucket and I'm going to use this number, uh, this is a number four Da Vinci uh, travel brush. It's got a Kalinske Sable natural hair uh, brush, brush hairs. And with figures I like to either dry my brush off on a sponge or on a tissue like this or on my uh, apron sometimes. And that usually gets a good result. So first thing I want to do is make some flesh color for the face. I'm going to start off with the male figure again. So cadmium red with a little bit of um, yellow ochre.
and I'm just going to start there and try to keep my brush on the paper the whole time and I'll go right up into the brim of the hat the underside brim of the hat and I have the head done and let me go in and do the arms and the hands so I'm going to do the same thing keep the brush on the paper like so and then over here too and you can notice I got mostly all my painting done by just a few times going to the palette I don't all you need is a little bit of paint here for your flesh tones like this there we go and let's move right over to the female figure too and remember your flesh Flesh tones are going to turn out lighter, so they look darker when you first put them on. But then once you let it dry for a little bit, 10, 20 minutes, you're going to notice that it does become much lighter. So we'll see how that lightens up. I'm going to do an elbow here. Like so. And then the hand on the uh, tool here. And that looks pretty good. And then we'll, once this dries, then you can add a little bit of shadowing to it, possibly, if you feel you need some shadowing in it. I notice the light is sort of coming from this side of the picture going across this way. So the light's sort of coming this way across the picture and kind of from behind them. So you can see the lights catching the, t the um, front of her uh, head here, her face. And it's lighting up the back of his hat here and the back of his clothes, like a rim lighting almost effect. So we know note that the light is coming from behind them and from this side this way. So if we want to, we can just say to ourselves, let's make a mark up here on our tape just so we know the light's coming from this side over here shining this way and sort of behind them okay we're gonna let that flesh um, paint set up and dry a little bit and we can start working our uh, some blue here cobalt blue I'm gonna use for the ma man's shirt and I'm going to use some darker. So I'm, I'm going to try to keep it looking like I see in the picture. Some of the darker darks over here. Maybe a little bit of French ultramarine in there too for some of that darker. And then some over here. So I'm going to try to start getting some of the darker shadowing areas in where I see some of the darker areas here. And there's a little bit across this way. Then I rinse off the brush and then dry off the brush. And then I just sort of blend in those shadows and this tends to be and you can kind of see I get a little bit of a grayish blue if I mix in some of the flesh tone with the uh, shirt which is okay you can do that and there's some more Cobalt, that's French ultramarine blue and a little bit of cobalt. So I'm trying to get the little bit of the darker colors there, the darker tonal values. 
And again, just a tidbit of information. Does this make sense? We're going to want to not overwork this too much. Let's get a simple wash on for the shirt. Maybe even take some um, sap um, olive green. Chromium of oxide, maybe a little bit. A little bit of sap green, olive green. Maybe a little bit of lemon, cadmium lemon yellow. And let's do a little bit of greenery on the, the, the back part of his shirt there. Just so we can kind of get the feel of some... some plants and things because they're in the thick of the farmland here. And then we can also make that little bit of that rim lighting on his shirt. Like that. And let's start uh, working up into the hat. So I noticed that his hat, let's get maybe some hair, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and I see some dark, dark darks here where his hat is in his hair, and he's got a beard, and that beard comes down over here, like that cross that way. Like that. And there's a little bit of dark there. And then over here on his hat. Then it starts to get into that raw um, yellow ochre. His hat there. And never worry about it blend the colors together on the underside of the brim of the hat with the hair. You can always go back in and do a little dark, darker tonal value later um, if you need to. Main thing is not to overwork it. And then over here, more yellow ochre. And since the light is coming from back here this way, you can see his hat's lighter over there. So we're going to leave that light maybe rinse off the brush, clean fresh water, dry off the brush a little bit and take this wash and slowly blend it out until it's white paper like that. And again you can always come back in and do a little touch up once it completely dries 100% but you don't want to keep working in the one area. So now that we've got the basics done with the hat and the beard and the underside of the hat and this front part of the hat, let's let that be. And there's more greens here, so let's blend that in. So we'll do some more greens up here, just to go around the hat a little bit. Blend that in. A couple splashes, and again, you're not doing... Since these are all greens, and we're in like the thick of the farmlands here, and there's all interesting you know colors of greens and things like that you don't have it's a it's a real fun thing to paint because you don't have there's no real stress with it because of the fact that it's just some greens and plants and things and we're going to abstract it we're not going to go with painting the details we're going to abstract this and then you can start doing a couple shapes like that maybe here and there just to just do a few of those, just indications. We're abstracting the background on these figures. We're not going to try to do all these details in there. That would be too uh, time consuming and wouldn't look good either, I don't think. So, and then here we have the back of the hat. And we leave a little bit of light on the rim of the hat back there because we remember the light is coming from behind. And I use a little bit of the repeating colors. So 
I take a little bit of that brown from the um, beard and hair, and I put that into the the greens here. The, that's all. All right, so we're. This is a good place for a break. If not, let's continue on. I think we can do a little more. Let's start doing the 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 pants here. Let's go with a French ultramarine blue. Burn umber, burn sienna, more French ultramarine blue. Let's make them dark. The pants are dark, more like a. And I'm going to follow the. Try to follow the patterns that I see a little bit. So I'm going to try to get the subtle dark and lights of the. I notice the. Dark, darkest dark is about there, like that, and then there's some more darkest darks here, and then from there it starts to lighten up. And I just take the brush and just And then right about where the knee is, it starts to get some darker darks in there, some folds in the pants. And there's some more darks down in here. And that's the point where we can just sort of let that flow into the gr green area. And we can add some greens down in there. Some splashing, you can see I like to splash, get the excitement of some splashing going on. Sap green. Sap green and... Uh, olive green a little bit of finger painting too like that and then we can make some we can make some darker shapes like that so this is where you just sort of, if you can get some plant shapes, like, like this, you know, here and there, and put some, maybe th put some upstrokes here and some, I would tend to leave the bottom kind of darker here. I think that's plenty more splashing, lighter, lighter splashing there. All right, that's pretty good. I think we can take a break here at this point. And um, I can kind of see we might. And remember, you can go back in and add some darks if you want. So I just try to join up the, the colors a little bit. Sometimes that really helps a lot if we kind of take a lighter wash and sort of go across the picture and start to and if you go over an area and it doesn't look good I thought maybe going over 
the arm a little bit might look good, but it doesn't look that... I think it looks better just kind of leaving the arm of the figure here. I like to leave some white paper. And you can kind of see we're having a fun time here, aren't we? Okay, that is pretty much a good place to take another break. Let this all dry now. Let all your wash dry. That'll be a big help as you continue to paint. If you let sections dry like this, it's really a big help. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll start doing some more work to the female figure here. And again, we're painting these beautiful Amish uh, people that are farming out here in the... Uh, uh, farmlands. We're capturing a really nice area here. They're doing some harvesting of crops and um, I think we have the essence of it really already really in good form and uh, we will be right back. We'll again continue to paint the female figure. Some more of the background uh, greenery and plants and I think we'll have a finished painting. So I hope you'll continue to stick with us here and um, work. And uh, we'll be back in just a second. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, so we're getting started again. And I always mention uh, taking breaks um, is really helpful. When you take breaks, you can actually come back and uh, see some things you might want to touch up. Um, and that is actually a... A really powerful tool you can have when you do your breaks because first your paper is drying so you have uh, the drying time which helps you from avoiding a lot of um, washes that become uh, kind of like uh, ballooning out and smudging and um, cauliflower they call it cauliflower you know watercolor artists usually call that situation when you're putting washes very wet washes next to another one and they sort of like balloon out or blossom or cauliflower. Those are some of the terms you hear people say in watercolor, artists on uh, YouTube and professional artists and so forth. So when you step back and let things dry a little bit and take a break and you come back, everything's pretty much dry. I took about a 20 minute break, had some soup. And um, now that I'm, uh, I've had my lunch, I'm coming back and I'm saying, wow, everything's dry. That's great. Everything's dry now. And that's where I can go in and do some darker darks and make some touch-ups and I kind of noticed my hat over here the brim of the hat got lost a little bit with the greens that I put in and that's fine you can fix those up by just adding a little more shadow darker tonal values and you're going to see how we're going to do this all so but remember coming back from a break right now everything is dry now and that's the really big key here because that's going to help us tremendously as we do some touch-ups what I'm going to do is um, I'll save the very last portion of this video to do some of the details in the face, the, the eyeglasses and touching up the hat, the brim of the hat underneath the shadowing. I just want to, at this point now, um, finish up the woman's um, headdress and her uh, blouse and her skirt. And then I think we're pretty much, um, we're in really good shape. And then we can let that dry and come back and do our final touch-ups. So. Um, first thing I'll do is I'll just, out of good habit, I'm going to change the water here. So I always change my water, fr fresh clean water, two, three times when I'm doing a painting, I'll change the water out, especially if it's got a lot of darks in it. This one doesn't have as many darks, so, but in any case, I like to change the water out. And let's get started now. Let's do the woman's headdress. So that's dark, so we can go right into here where we had our darks. And we're just going to get the, the darks of her headdress here. And it's really very, very dark on the right side over here. And then it softens out and becomes a little lighter on the left side. Again, we said the light's coming from this way across the scene. And it's also behind them a little bit, up high in the sky and from behind. So it's backlit. The scene is basically back, backlit. And so now I'm going to go around her ear there it's a little bit darker 
And now we're headdressed, so I'm going to rinse off my brush with fresh, clean water, dry off the brush on a paper towel or a sponge next to my water container, or my I sometimes tap it on my uh, apron here. So now it's just a damp brush with nothing on it but a little bit of water. Dam it's damp. And then I just take that dark and just smooth it on out to get that lighter tonal value. And if it's going too dark, rinse it off again. J maybe dry off the brush even more. Maybe really dry off the brush a lot. Just to get that final bit of light there, like so. Like that. And then there's maybe a little bit of dark along this underside here. That looks good. And if you see something here like that might look awkward again, remember, you can. we're going to touch up this head of this female um, with, uh, with some uh, paint, some negative shape painting. Let's do her shirt. So that's going to be a greenish color, a greenish blue, maybe some, uh, we have some, uh, that looks like a, yeah, like this is a viridian. Let's use viridian. I think I need to change out my viridian, it's getting a little bit. So I'll mix the viridian with a little bit of olive green. And let's see how that looks. It's going to be darker over here. Okay, and, and then I do the same thing. Uh, let me get some dark here, French ultramarine blue. There's a little bit of darker tonal value there. So if we put in a little bit of that tone, we're good. Rinse off the brush. Dry off the brush on a little bit of paper towel or tissue so that you don't have too much water or we don't want any paint on the uh, brush at this point. So here you're just taking damp damp brush, hairs of the brush damp, check off that water, get it dry and so it's just damp, and you just use the paint that's already on the paper and just smooth it on out like that. Try to get it. Maybe you need a little bit of paint. You have to go by feel. And then you just try to get that lighter color there. And I notice I need a little more Tonal, darker tonal value with that green on this side and then I smooth it on over, over this way and that looks pretty good and then maybe over here we have the blouse over there and then there's some a bit of some dark green and blue there And then we're going to go with a kind of a mixture of that dark we made, which was French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. It's a little bit darker over here on the So this is the shadow side over here, so it's darker over here, so we can get some more French Ultramarine Blue, Burn Umber, Burn Sienna, more French Ultramarine Blue to keep it really, really dark. You could also use some Ivory Black or French uh, Payne's Gray if you want. But this tends to look pretty good, a mixture. And
and then we still have a little more of her uh, work dress here. Like that. And if you put a couple spots of color, it, it will seem a little better. It'll seem like it's flowing more down into the the uh, the greenery here. And then I dry off my brush, get a little more dark on the very very tip of the brush, just so I can add a little more dark darks there. And then I wouldn't do anything to the uh, shovel or the um, her uh, tool here she's using for the uh, when she's farming and they're working on the farm. He's got his bucket here. Maybe we'll do a little work to the bucket here. Then I'll rinse off the brush, dry off all the water, and then just do blend it in a little bit like that. Then we go in some more sap green, olive green, maybe a little French ultramarine blue. And just do a little bit of greenery here. Let's keep it loose and free. Let's not go overboard with details. So, we can work up here around the blouse a little bit with some more greens. So I'll just get the green mixes we're using, which is sap green, olive green, maybe a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue for some darker darks. And we're just going to do some free, free flowing brush strokes. We don't want to get too much um, stress trying to do all kinds of details to the uh, greenery. Let's just leave it very, very free and like this, some darks. Here. A little bit of splashing. And then maybe we'll do some just some color. And I think that's if we do a minimal amount of details, I think we're going to be better off. So I just might do some angles into the to the figures, just to kind of draw the eye into the figures, like so. And a few more darks here. probably good. Now we're going to let this dry completely, 100%, and that is going to enable us, we'll do one more break, and this enables us to do the final last 
couple of details here, and you're going to see how I just very minimal uh, detail now at the the end of this painting. You can see we've got the general idea of everything with the colors on the paper, very loose. You can see I did it very loosely. I didn't get real super fine details everywhere. I just kind of got the paint on there. You know, I did the figures first and then started to, as I was going, tie in the background a little bit here and there, get some of that green greenery in there, but not trying to look at the photograph and try to do it that way. That's where I think photographs can be harmful when we're copying from photographs because from experience I know that doing the background like this in an abstract fashion is much more uh, um, like productive than trying to sit here and draw in all of these plants. If, if we were to try to draw in all these plants and work from this photograph, <clears throat> excuse me, we would be really fighting life in a sense because there's so much detail there it wouldn't even kind of it would be it wouldn't look good is basically what I'm saying so you can see I just did an abstract of what I'm seeing in the background here just some greens dark greens lighter greens a little bit of brown in there too and, and red for the colors of the the uh, male figures hair which was a little bit of burnt sienna and burnt umber. And we can do the same thing now, just we can add a little bit of that too over here. So we always try to mix our colors around to um, harmonize the painting so and that's all just a little bit all right one more break we'll let this dry and then we'll finish up the details all right everybody this has been a marathon we've been working hard getting our figures uh, done. Now we're just, this is dry. I took about a 15 minute break. All the watercolor now is completely dry. And what I'm gonna do is zoom in on the figures. I'm not gonna use any new colors. So any of the colors that we used throughout this entire painting, I'm not gonna use anything new. So you'll just notice we're gonna zoom in on the picture so you can just see the final details what we, what we do here like this and uh, I'm just gonna get some more of the uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber I'm gonna mix a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber to get a little bit of the the uh, the underside of the brim of the hat because we kind of that flowed into the green when we were painting the green in. So now this is the point in time when you're really going to be using your tissue a lot and drying off your brush. You don't want to have much water at all now while you're doing your final details. So you're going to stick with with just basically and then we're going to take some cobalt blue To do some sunglasses here. Okay, so we're just putting in some sunglasses here. shadow under the nose and if the mouth looks too big or something just lift it up maybe put a little shadow under the 
under the bottom lip. Subtlety is really good at the final details. And then here um, I'm going to use some more greens just to kind of mold the uh, So I'm going to try to just and then maybe a little shadowing here on the temple. Okay, so we have the and I'll do some more darker dark here for the hat. And that kind of blends in with the the greens. Maybe a little bit of a darker. And I dry off my brush just pick up a little bit of the the darker darker mix we mixed before which was French ultramarine blue burnt umber burnt sienna with lots of French ultramarine blue and then we're going to do the uh, overalls here Maybe a little bit of that black, just a little bit for the uh, shirt. And believe it or not, just a couple, a couple shadow marks here. will kind of make everything look look better. And again, I'm constantly drying off the brush with the paper towel or tissue just so I can avoid adding too much water because the details really we can't have too much water in that in the detail areas. Now, this is something I think I would the only detail I would go over another time is the hat. Um, so I'd let this dry and then do the... And I think I can kind of just get that finished for now. And maybe a little more shadow over here on the hair. And I think that's it. That's complete. And then all we have to do now is we'll peel off the tape and we'll see how it looks uh, with a nice crisp border here. I'll zoom back out just a touch.
And there we have it. A really enjoyable figure painting. We can do it in an occasional card format, or you can just do this for fun and have it for a painting. Just doing it as a composition to practice up on figure painting and learn the process. The more you do the thing, more, the more you do the figure process, um, the more you just get used to it, and after a while, it becomes a lot more simple. In the beginning, when you're doing this for the first dozen times, it's going to be a little more difficult because you kind of have to learn the method and process over and over. But after you know a dozen times, maybe or so, then you kind of have the feel for like starting out the figure. You're always starting out with the head. And then you scale again with the head size of the head. You start to get the rest of the body going and the arms and, you know, all those things just the more you practice it, the better you get and the more familiar you get with the process and then you don't have to think about it. So that's the key with art, especially with watercolor painting. If you practice over and over and over again and repeat things over and over again while you're painting all the proper methods and uh, procedures and techniques, then they become second nature, much like uh, riding a bicycle or driving a car. You really aren't even thinking about the brakes, the gas pedal, the steering wheel, you know, because you're so used to doing those things or pedaling, steering the bicycle, tapping the brakes, all those different things that you would normally do. If you do them over and over again and repeat them over and over again, very simple, it'll become second nature. And then you'll be thinking of doing other things in your painting while those other things are just memorized and are committed to memory and you don't have to really think about them you can just do them automatically basically and that's the key so i hope you had a great time we had a fun time doing these figures we're going to be doing figures in the very near future again uh, i'm sure many of you will um, have a great time doing these and um, again it's just learning the process and uh, practicing it over and over again so we'll see you on the next video and again thanks so much for coming by joining us here on my channel and I wish you all the best of success with your watercolors and we'll see you soon.